I hate opening up a raw image to find it covered in sensor dust like this because I know I'm going to waste the next several minutes of my life clicking on dots to get rid of them. And that's why I'm so excited for the new Adobe Camera Raw version 17.5, which is an AI based dust removal tool to automatically find and fix almost all these problems in one go. In this video, we'll compare the new AI based approach to the legacy manual approach to see where each excels and how to get the most out of this new dust removal tool, which has some surprising hidden behaviors. Let's start first by just analyzing the dust in the scene. You can see these obvious dark spots in the smooth sky and water. They're not hard to find some of these. There's also a lot of subtle ones like this dust spot here, or here, or here, or here. There's quite a few you might miss in the edit, and if they show up on your wall in a print, it's gonna be very frustrating. So of course, the Visualize Spots tool can help us find some of the obvious ones. We just dial it up until we can see all of these little problems, and there's just a ton of dust spots in this image, unsurprisingly, because I shot at F22 to try and get nice smooth water when I didn't have an ND filter on me. But I do have to go and fix these. There's a ton of dust to remove. Now, rather than making you watch me manually do it with a healing brush on this image, I've already done that work. So let's cancel out of this original here. And what I have is a raw smart object that I've edited and all the dust is still in this. And then I duplicated it multiple times so we can compare different approaches. So in this next one, I went and manually cleaned it up. And of course we get to a nice result here, but it was a lot of work. If I double click into this raw smart object, go back to the remove tab. And now if I hover the image, you can see each of these little band-aids is a manual click I had to do, I don't know, 40 times or whatever to clean up this image. It was a lot of work. It took a lot of time. I would love to not do that work and spend it on something else because there's just really nothing fun about this work. So now that we've seen all this kind of manual work, let's cancel out of this and see what we can do with the new AI dust tool. So on the next layer, I've not yet removed the dust. We'll double click it and we're gonna fix it in raw. And then in a moment, we'll compare it to using the raw filter because we're gonna see they have a little bit of a different result here. So I'm gonna double click, go back to the remove tool. This time, instead of using the manual approach, we're gonna go down to the new AI based dust removal tool. We open it up. You'll see it's marked as early access, meaning this is kind of like a beta. It's not perfect yet, but it does a really good job. And all you have to do is click apply. There's really just one option here, but we'll manually be able to get some better results by tweaking it in a moment. So notice that it actually missed a couple of obvious dust spots. These three are pretty clear ones that should have been fixed and one here. But all these other little circles, when you hover over the image, you get these circles. Each of these little circles is a spot that it fixed for me. So there's you know, 35 or 40 things I didn't have to do, it took care of for me. And all we have to do now is just click for the manual remove tool and we can go and click and click and click, and, you know, just go fix the things that it missed. That's not hard. It's much easier to do a few of these than to do the entire image. So you can see that it gave us a pretty nice starting point. I'm gonna get rid of these manual ones just so we're looking at the AI only. So if I hit the undo here, now we're back to just looking at the AI remove tool, which is still active. It shows all the places where it removed us, but what it's not showing you is that it actually made some other changes to the image. Watch the area around the base of this tree when I kind of hide the AI for a second. See, there's a little bit of a shift there. The water got brighter with the dust spot removal tool on. So these little marks are not telling you the whole story. It actually can make changes anywhere in the image it's an AI and it can do some unpredictable things. So that's an interesting behavior. It might be better to control things locally. And for that, instead of using this global tool in the raw, we could apply it as a filter. So let's keep this global raw adjustment like this for reference, we'll say, okay. And this will be one version that we can compare. Then the next layer, we're gonna start again with all the dust back on, but instead of doing it in the raw smart object, we'll do it externally using the raw filter. So we go up to filter, camera raw filter, and this will apply it to the outside, the rasterized version of the image rather than the smart object. And you can tell that it's not raw because my temperature now can go negative and positive. It's not in Kelvin. This is always kind of the easy tell. Let's undo that. So we're applying this in a different way because we're doing it as a filter, not in the raw. Again, we'll just do the same thing. We go back to the remove tab, go down to dust, just click apply, let it go do its thing, Watch these dust spots this time. Notice that it got one that it missed previously and it missed a couple up above. So it is a different result. And also watch the tree here. 
I don't see any real change. So it's a different result, arguably a little bit better with this approach, but it has one other advantage. And that is, you know, if there are problems with the tree or whatever, we could blend it out because we've done this as a filter. If we click OK, we'll see that it's now applied as a smart filter with a mask. So if we had a problem in something like the tree, all we have to do is hit B for our brush using black paint. We could just brush in this area and remove it there to protect this from being changed and just let it fix the other problem areas. And these remaining dust spots here, I would just go back into the filter and just manually clone them out. But I'm gonna leave that alone so we can directly compare these different results. To make a comparison here, let's kind of hide these. Let's just start with my manual approach. I wanna compare these two. You can easily see the difference by going and changing the blend mode over to difference in Photoshop. And you see all these little dots on the screen here showing the differences, but it only shows the biggest differences. It's not that easy to see. Another way we can compare it is using Lumenzia. In Lumenzia, the diff button will help us compare a couple of different layers. If I just simply control click to select these two layers, when I click on diff, it's pre-selected my comparison layers that I had selected here. And all I have to do is hit compare layers. This creates a preview showing the difference between these. And this would normally be used to create a mask or selection, but it just serves a really good purpose here for visualizing the difference. If I grab the slider in Lumenzi and bring it down, I can really see the difference here. So these are all the spots where my manual revision is changed relative to the original. So there's no problems. It's just cleaned up all the dust. It's exactly what we'd expect. Let's go discard that. Let's now compare to what happened with our AI remove layer, all right? So here's this AI remove layer. We'll select again, both of these by command, clicking to select the two, click on diff and Lumenzia compare the layers, and then we'll drag this down to really see the difference. And notice we have all the same dust spot stuff other than the ones it missed. But then we have this stuff on the horizon where it made some unexpected and probably unwanted changes, especially here and maybe here. Some of this stuff is pretty subtle and wouldn't necessarily show in the image, but it is showing why you might want to use a smart filter. So if you had to, you could just blend it out of this area and just let it fix the sky and the water without affecting the main content. Let's discard this and make one last comparison here, looking at the filter-based approach versus the original. We'll click on diff again, compare our layers. And this time notice that if we make it stronger here, it fixed dust and did not cause any problems on the horizon. So we just got a different result. I don't know that I'd necessarily say that the filter-based approach was better, but it is much cleaner and all we'd have to do to finish this is just go back into the raw filter and go back to the remove tool, go to the manual approach. We can visualize our spots if we want to and just simply click away to finish that edit. I think that's not real. That's probably all the issues. Let's see here. There's one here that I missed. Sometimes it can be hard to see with the visualize. So you can just kind of manually check something like this just cleans it up. And maybe one last one here I didn't get. So, you know, you just, Obviously it can be a lot of work, but this is a lot less work doing, what is this, five clicks to finish the job versus the 40 or 50 I had before. I think it's a beautiful result. And in my experience, this new AI based dust removal tool, it only fixes things, it rarely causes problems, and that's great. So if you have to manually remove a few, that's fine. It generally does not damage the image. Once in a while, there may be a little change like the base of this tree and you can mask that out. But on the whole, I find this to be a very safe tool that will do 80, 90, maybe even 100% of the work for you with a single click. And then you just manually use the old approach to fix whatever it missed. Now to learn more about AI tools from Adobe, click to this next video.